Welcome friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am glad that you are able to make it to this place. Now, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Listen to me, I want you to listen uninterruptedly to the message I'm about to bring to you. God has given me a word for you and your life will never be the same again. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and don't forget to make comments. I would like to read your comments and don't forget to also subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification button to receive notification for new uploads of videos. Now listen to me, you are in for the best of time. God's word is going to come and change your life. I want to talk to us in the second and third service on what I titled the cycle of covenant blessing. I was say the cycle of covenant blessing. Please say it again, the cycle. When I say cycle, I'm not saying C-I-R. I'm saying C-Y-C-L-E. Just like the woman's cycle. You know, women have cycle. Every 20, is it 28 days? Huh? Every 20... Eight days. So they call it cycle. A cycle is something that repeats itself. So every 28 days, women will enter into a cycle. So I want to talk to you this morning on the cycle of covenant blessing. I say the cycle of covenant blessing. I just define what a cycle is. The continuity so this morning, I'm believing God that after this message, everyone watching online and those who are physically on site, you will enter into the cycle of covenant blessing. It will be repeating itself in your life. When you are gone at old age, your children too will enter into the cycle. If a mother has a cycle and she delivers a baby girl, what will happen to that baby girl? She too will have her cycle, Abby. And that's generation to generation. So when we say covenant, what is covenant? Covenant is an agreement in a simple word. Covenant is what? An agreement. A vow. Another word for vow is... Uh, I'm trying to... There's a word that is common when you talk about covenant. A deal, huh? A hot, thank you, a hot. So when we say covenant blessing, we're not talking about just an ordinary blessing. A blessing that is sealed with an oath. It's not just a promise. God did not just promise his children to bless them. He placed an oath on that promise. In order to commit himself. Because he said his covenant, he will not break. God, God is a covenant, he's a covenant keeping God. Is not what to call him? He doesn't break covenant. He keeps covenant. He said, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that proceed from my mouth. Hallelujah. So when we say cycle of covenant blessings, we are saying a continuous blessing that is under a hood. If I tell you that I will give you a plot of land, I just said, promised you. And there is no agreement between us. Oh God, you don't have land yet. Abi? Because you cannot go to court and say, he told me he will give me a plot of land. They will ask you in court, where is the agreement? There must be a document that proves that I made that promise. So I can tell you tomorrow that I'm sorry. I, I didn't even know when I said it. But if after promising you, I gave you an agreement, a oath, ah, okay, go and rest. Even if I want to collect that land, <laughs> it won't be that easy. Abby? Because there is an agreement. So the blessing we're talking about today, the cycle of blessing that is under a oath, Where God had come to a point with you, he didn't just say he's blessing you, he placed an oath. He, he swore by himself. And the first man God did that with was Abraham. Everybody say Abraham. 
So let's go to read where it happened. Genesis 22, verse 12 to 18, quickly. I want you to please listen attentively. This is going to cause a turning point in your life, in your family. It, what will happen to you today will affect your next generation. Genesis 22, verse 12 to 18. And he said, God, you know the test now. We can't read it from the beginning. God told Abraham, God promised Abraham his son, Isaac. Abi. Then he had Isaac. Then God came back and said, give me Isaac. He said, take him for sacrifice. Isaac did not even talk to the mother of, sorry. Abraham did not even talk to the mother of Isaac. He took the boy on a journey, put all the things he would need for the sacrifice on his head, and they trek the wilderness to... If you are a father, no matter the type of, even if you are an adopted father, inside you you will be crying, Abby. Because the boy doesn't know what they were going for, but he knows that this is the end of this boy. So the three days journey to that mountain was a difficult journey for Abraham. Abby? Because he wasn't going to take that boy back home. I want you to please listen attentively. Abraham took Isaac. He said, he that beareth precious seed, weeping. That's a seed weeping, oh. He can't say no to God because he's in covenant with God. He took Isaac, tied his leg when they got there. Isaac said, what are you doing? What type of... Isaac could not even believe that they want to sacrifice him. What type of thing is this? He tied him. So when he was about to kill him, he had carried knife up. In law, intention is equal to action. In law court, when you intend to kill. So in law... Abraham had already killed Isaac inside his heart. To take him to that point, he has killed Isaac. So look at what now happened from verse 12. And God said, do not lay your hand on the lad, the young boy, and do nothing to him, for now I know that you fear God. He said, I just wanted to confirm how much you fear me, how much you are committed to me, how much you... He said, I know that you fear God since you have not withheld. You didn't hide Isaac from me. Your only son from me. You know, Isaac was different from Ishmael. Ishmael was Abraham's arrangement. Isaac was God's arrangement. Isaac was a promised son. Look at verse 12. We're going to 18. Verse 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. You see, the mood Abraham was, you know the mood for three days now? The mood of going to kill his son. He said, then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And there behind him was a ram caught in a ticket by its own. So Abraham went and took the ram. God provided a ram instead of Isaac. And offered it up for a what? Instead of his son. So it will have been Isaac that will have been burning on that altar. But since God had already confirmed what he wanted to confirm, he exchanged Isaac with a ram. And now Isaac looked up and saw the smoke of what will have been the smoke of Isaac. I want to create that real picture in your mind so you can understand. He lifted up his eyes and he said, verse 14 now, we're going to Verse 14, and Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Abraham called the name of the place. The Lord will provide. Abraham named that place Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. In the month of the Lord, it shall be provided. I stand today upon the authority of God. This is our month of financial revival. In this month of the Lord, the Lord will provide. Whatever is a need, it shall be provided. You don't believe it, so your amen is very reluctant. Your amen is weak because you don't believe it. I stand upon the authority in the word of God. I don't care how much the money is. I don't know how big the bill is. The Lord will provide. 
It may not be monetary need. It can be material need. It can be spiritual. It can be emotional. It can be a baby. It can be a husband. It can be a wife. I stand as God's oracle. I stand as his representative upon the authority in his word. And I declare this place you are, the Lord will provide. Please take your seat. The next verse, quickly. Somebody has received it already. Then the angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time out of heaven. A voice came and said, this is now God. By myself I have sworn. That's covenant. Says the Lord, because you have done this thing, and have not we tell your son, your only son. Blessing. I'll bless you. And multiplying. I will multiply your descendants. As the stars of the heaven. And as the sand which is on the seashore. Your descendants. Your descendants. Shall possess. The gate of their enemies. This blessing is not about only you, Abraham. Your children will be so powerful, so mighty, they will possess the gate of their enemies. When people stand against your children, they will become your children's property. You didn't say amen to that prayer. The next verse, quickly, the next verse. We're going somewhere. The next verse. In your seed, in your children, all the nations of the earth, Australia, Africa, America, Europe, Asia, because you have obeyed my voice, in your children, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. <laughs> your offspring will bless Asia. Your offspring will bless America. Your offspring will bless Australia. Your offspring will bless Europe. Your offspring will bless Africa. Please take your seat. Under the old covenant, after Abraham passed God's test, God swore. By himself. That's the only place in the Bible God swore. That means it's a serious matter. You don't swear in a, in a non-serious issue. Abraham touched God by this act of not withholding Isaac from him. And God, he didn't, you know, when you are swearing, you swear by something that is bigger than you. And since there is nothing bigger than God, God swore by himself. He said, by myself, I swore. You know when people say, I swear. It's not like today that people say, I swear, and they are still lying, you know? In the north, many years ago in the north, if, if an malam say Allah, he's telling the truth. I don't now, you know, the house of last year is not the house of this year. House of today are now packaging. But in, when I grew up, I grew up in the north. When they say Allah, they are swearing by God. Ah, they don't lie. Once they say Allah, Allah, Allah. God did not find anybody to swear by. He swore by himself. And said, <laughs> in blessing, I'll bless you. In multiplying, I'll multiply your descendants. He said, your children will possess the gate of their enemies. What a blessing. I will say, what a blessing. That blessing came because Abraham passed the test. You will pass the test. Every test God gives you, you won't fail it. If you pass your I can test, you fail God's test. You didn't pass any test. If you pass your professional test and you fail God's test, you didn't pass any test. That was a serious test for Abraham. He passed the test. You passed God's test. You're not saying amen properly. And when he passed God's test, God declared that blessing over him. The, the Bible scholars call it Abrahamic blessing. Up till today, there is a type of blessing they call what? Abrahamic blessing. Blessing appear in the Bible for more than 2,000 times. 
But this particular one is different from all the other ones. This is what? Abrahamic blessing. Let me show you where you can have a picture of it in Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Quickly, our time is running fast. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. Bless is the man who fear. You see that fear again there? Every time God confirms his fear in your heart. Every time you pass a test of the fear of God. Every time. It's always a test of, the, does he still fear me? He's been asking me for Isaac, asking me for Isaac, asking me for Isaac. Now I've given him Isaac. Has he become the boss of himself? It's always a test of the fear. So the Bible says, he said, blessed is the man who what? Fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandment. Look at what will happen to that man from verse 2 to 3. His descendants shall be mighty on heart. His children will be my. Those kids you have, you think they are small children. They sh if you fear God, they shall be mighty or not. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. They can't be poor, they will be blessed. They can't be broke, they will be blessed. They can't be caused. They Forget about what you are saying today, they are blessed. Shall be blessed. Look at verse 3 now. Wealth and riches will be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. I thought you'd say amen there. Because Abraham passed the test of God's fear. God brought Abraham under a covenant blessing. That was a covenant blessing. He swore by himself. He brought him into the cycle of covenant blessing. So please watch this. This is very important. So from Abraham, God brought Abraham into the cycle, cycle of covenant blessing. Abraham brought Isaac into that cycle. Isaac brought Jacob into that cycle. These are generations of Jacob brought Joseph into that cycle. So the cycle that started with Abraham Isaac enjoyed it. Jacob enjoyed it. Joseph dived into it. To your fourth generation, they are blessed. You didn't say amen properly. From Abraham to the fourth generation. The full cycle of God's blessing is at least four generations. God doesn't think small. God doesn't, you think God is just looking at you and every time he sees you, it's only you he sees. Even if you are not married yet, when God sees you, he sees your children. He sees your seed. He sees people that are coming from you, both biological, adopted, foster, all of them. He sees them. They are in that cycle. Even though Ishmael is not referred to as a promised child, Ishmael is a blessed person. If you want to know, Travel to Dubai. Go to Qatar. Go to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Go to Kuwait. The biggest currency in the world is Kuwait's currency. It's bigger than dollar. I wish you can allow us to be visiting that place once in a while. If you know what one dollar is to Kuwait, you will run to Kuwait. You will relocate to Kuwait. Although Kuwait is not easily to relocate. If not, Nigerians have taken over Kuwait by now. They've tried, but Kuwait is not a place you can just enter. It's ruled by king. The rules there are very strict. It's not like America. It's not democracy. It's autocracy. You misbehave, they cut your hand. You misbehave again, they remove one of your eyes. <laughs> so Nigerians, you know Nigerians, you know us now. You know us. Despite the big money there, we say, no, Kuwait, take Edirahim. But if you want to know how blessed Ishmael, how much God has blessed Ishmael, see the Arab. See the Arab race. Despite the fact that they are not the problem. But because once a man is blessed, anything that touches him, anything around him, ah, you are blessed. Once a man is blessed, anything, anything, his dog, his cat, he enters, if a man is blessed, he uses an hotel room, go and enter that room. There's still some residents, I mean, residues of blessings there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Blessed. Say I'm blessed. 
When we use the word blessed, we always think about money. We are too small in our mind. Blessed is more than money. Monique is the smaller, is the small fragment of blessed. When you are blessed, it's more than money. You can be rich and not be blessed. Huh? All the things we read there, it's not just about being wealthy. He said, even your children, they'll be powerful. They will possess the gate of their enemy. Their head will be straight. They won't be taking drugs up and down being non entities. Do you know how many rich people that are not blessed? Say, eh, is this, some pastors are even coming on social media now. They say, if the blessing is from God, how can Elimos be blessed? Who says Elimos is blessed? He's only rich and wealthy. I'm going to show you what it means to be blessed. It's more than, it's, you will have money. I'm not saying you'll be poor, you, but it's more than having money. The richest man in the, in the 20s, the richest man in the 20s is called uh, Onassis. He became the richest man in the world because of steel. It was an industrialized age and he was in control of steel. Do you say he's blessed? He's not blessed. He was only rich. He has plenty of money. But he's not in charge of his life. According to history, he'll be sleeping with uh, his private jet attendants in front of everybody. Is that a blessed man? He cannot even control himself. Anything he's scared is down. That's not blessed. You can't say no. And so you are not. When we talk about blessed and rich, they are not the same. Onassis committed suicide. Is he blessed? Is that blessed? But Osutan, he committed suicide. Onassis one day was in, on his, in his uh, palace. Palacios. And he was just enjoying himself with all his women. He doesn't have... How many rich people have wife? Don't let me ask you some questions. Though. How, many, how many rich men has a settled home? Don't let me ask some questions though, so that we don't... Onassis was with all his women. They were having party on his, you know, and he was just enjoying drinking and and his son was flying back home. He has a private place where his private jet lands close to his house. And he sat like this watching his son flying. And he crashed his first son in his face. See, today nobody knows why the plane crashed. Is that blessed? The blessing of the Lord make it rich. And had there no sorrow. Proverbs 10.22 when you say blessed, you're talking about nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. It's complete. I declare this morning, you are blessed. You, 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 because you don't know the meaning, so you are not even saying amen. I said you are blessed. I said you are blessed. So Abraham entered into the cycle of this covenant blessing. He brought Isaac into it. Isaac brought Jacob into it. Jacob brought Joseph into it. You bring your children into it. Your children will bring their children into it. Their children will bring their children's children into it. That's what we're talking about. Covenant blessing is generational blessing. It's multi-generational blessing. It's not every wealth you can transfer. Have you not noticed? It's not every... The billionaires of today cannot guarantee that their children will be billionaires tomorrow. There's no guarantee. Have you? It's what we have seen now in history. That you can pass success to your children. It's God's blessing. It's, not, it's, 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 it's God. According to statistics, 98% of those who inherit wealth, they squander it. 98. Only two take you to the next level. So the 98 are not blessed, they are only rich. The ability to pass what God gave you to your children. It's God. Especially in this time of all kinds of nonsense. I pray this morning that you'll be blessed indeed. You will enter into the cycle of covenant blessings. You will bring in your children. Your children will bring in their own children. Their own children will bring in their own children. 
So God's blessing is generational. Exodus 34 verse 7 was talking about how the cycle is fourth generation. Exodus 34 verse 7. Can we have it quickly? Exodus 34 verse 7. Then we go to 2 Kings chapter 15 verse 12. He said, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children and to the third generation and the fourth generation. So that's why you have to be careful what you do with your life because the implication can be multi-generational. He said he visits the iniquity, the punishment of the father. He's the father that did it to, on the children, on the children's children, on the third generation, and to the fourth generation. That's why some of us are struggling with things. You know what I'm talking about. We, before we got born again, we struggle with things. We say, Kilo Dekin Emoshe. Abi? Some of us have got into trouble. We say, ah, what did I do? Kilo de. Some of us, well, before God born again, we saw some trouble. We say, Kilo de gone. Then maybe one day your parents now start to say, ah, <laughs> I'm a deal, I'm a deal. That is, a child doesn't know medicine is calling it vegetable. Sit down. You see, uh, they will now begin to tell you stories. Say, ah, that, so you now, you, that's when you now became serious with prayer. As I say, oh, God, deliver me. Ah. I cannot, what killed my father cannot kill me. What killed my grandfather cannot kill me. <laughs> you are trying to get yourself out. And God's mercy brought you out. And you are out permanently. And you are out forever. You have broken out of generational course. You are breaking into generational cycle of blessings. And your children will not fight the fight you fought. You know, we've, some of us fought to be here. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we, we fought. You see, some of us are the first generation of Christian in our family. This is Africa now. Can we talk? This is Africa. Some of us are the first generation of believers in our family. So don't, don't be saying, well, it's, you are still fighting some fight. You are not too far to idolatry. You are just one step away. You know what we're talking about. Some of us, we are just the second family generation. Maybe your parents were lucky. So you are, you are looking at Pastor Finn and say, hey, they are first generation. You are not two generations. You know that's what some people do when, when Pastor Femi, Pastor Akim, we do, you know those names. They give testimony and say, they say, ah, ah, you are, you, you, okay, your, your daddy is a catechist. You know what they call catechist? Uh -huh. You are just two steps away. Some of us are three steps. Ah, you are lucky. Some are already four steps. Some are five steps. So they walk, there's a lot of work to do. That's why some of us still think the way we think. Because there's a need to renew the mind. Something that has been there for generations. You think it's easy? You can be born again like this. Getting renewed is work. Even medical science, they call it, they call it, uh, that's, they will say one sickness is a hereditary disease. Even medical science confirm that you can inherit disease from, they can't. That's why they ask you your medical history. Say, did your father, he say yes. Uh, they say, okay, sorry. <laughs> it's not you, but don't blame the doctor. You blame the people that came before you. I sat 40. My father was already diabetic. I sat 40. So when I understood how to break generational cause, that it's not just prayer that breaks generational cause, I stood my ground that what they call diabetes, even when I'm 90, I won't have it. I'll be 54 next I want to say next month. I'm always in a hurry. <laughs> I'm the only one that is always in a hurry to... <laughs> I don't know. Some people want to reduce the IME. I want to even increase it if possible. <laughs> By October, I'll be 54. 
I have never had diabetics. Every time my sugar level has been tested, it's been normal. I didn't just pray against diabetics. I did some things deliberately not to have diabetics. You, you are just praying. Prayer alone is not enough to break generational curse. If prayer breaks generational curse, Nigeria should not be poor. We are the most prayerful country in the world. So after prayer, there's a need to do certain things, certain covenant practice. Everybody say covenant practice. Covenant demands. Because I didn't tell you when I was defining covenant. Covenant is like a coin. You know coins? We don't have coins again in Nigeria. It has two sides. One side is responsibility. The other side is right. Privilege. Your right. Many of us only know that right. We don't know responsibility. The right is to command. You take authority over traditional cause. I break you in the name of Jesus. You are exercising your right. But after you are done, take responsibility. So I decided not to buy sugar into my house. If you see sugar in my house, they dash us. I decided not to eat sugar myself. I decided long ago to stay away from sugar. Because this thing is in my bloodline. It can burst inside me. I don't want it to burst. <laughs> so I didn't just pray. So I'm 54 very soon. And there's no diabetes. Some of us, poverty has been in our lineage for years. Grandpa, great-grandpa, you know, all those kind of... If you are going to break poverty, you are not just going to pray. You are going to take some deliberate step. You are going to take responsibility to see that you are not poor. My baba told me yesterday, he said, I couldn't do higher institution, not because I didn't pass, but my father could not. He said, so I made up my mind, even as, well, before I got married, that my son must go to school. So while he was working in a barber saloon in Ikeja, where we found ourselves, he was saving. He said he bought a land, 900,000 acres of land. I, I, I stopped his barber. I said, you have, you bought land some years ago. That's what, 900,000? He said, yes. He said, I still have it. My father used to check it for me. He said, I bought acres. He said, I keep, he said, they told me now the land is in millions. He said, I'm keeping it. So that when my child, now his son will be starting school in September. He had already paid 175000 for that boy to be in school. He had paid September school fees. You know when you know something is fighting you, you, you don't cut work. You don't cut work. People can cut work in that realm for you. You can eat sugar anyhow you like. Me, I know sugar is no, no. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some people can, can not listen to Pastor Adeoye on principles of financial success. You know you need it. So when the demon of poverty is running after people and they are catwalking, you don't join them. They can afford to catwalk. For you, you know how close the thing is. And yet you are catwalking. Your daddy littered everywhere with women. Everywhere with women. You don't even know all your siblings. And you want to break that generational cause. You are not working like somebody wants to break it. You are just praying. Prayer will not stop you. Though. You will do what Joseph did. You will flee all appearances of evil. You know why Joseph ran? He knows that this thing is too close. He knows how... Ishmael came. He knows how one of his granddad, Jacob, had to marry two wives. So when Joseph saw the appearance, you are catwalking. You are not breaking anything the way you are doing. Everybody say, I break it. Hallelujah. I wish we have time. So every parent must be careful what they do. Everybody. Because God will visit the iniquity of the father on the children. And the children's children. To the third generation. 
and the fourth generation. I don't want my children to be asked questions they don't know the answer. So the reason why I'm living right is not because of me alone, because of my children too. I'm not just living right because I want to live right, but because I know the consequence. I know it has a four generation consequence. Why I'm pursuing God's blessing is because I know the consequence too. I know if I, if I can step into the circle of covenant blessing to the fourth generation, they are done better. So God brought Abraham into the circle. Abraham brought Isaac into the circle. Isaac took responsibility to bring Jacob into the circle. Jacob took responsibility and brought Joseph. And if you check these four generations, these four men, they were all blessed. Galatians 6, 7 says, whatever a man sow, that he shall surely reap. Praise the name of the Lord. In 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 17, he promised King Jehu. He said, this throne I give you, I'll give to your fourth, I'll give to the next and the next to the fourth generation. 2 Kings 15, 17. Sorry, sorry 15, 12. 2 Kings 15, 12. It, God told King Jehu that I'm going to give you the throne. And I will make, and your children too will have that throne. And your children's children will have that throne. And your children's children's children will have that throne. God is giving somebody something this morning. Your children will receive it. Their children too will collect it. Your children's children's children will take their own too. I said God is blessing someone this morning. That, that blessing will be generational. You are not saying name. I said that blessing will be multi-generational. That blessing will be multi-generational. You are not saying amen. amen. So, Abraham became blessed by what they call Abrahamic blessings. Everybody say Abrahamic blessings. But we are in the new covenant. How can I enjoy that blessing? Galatians 3, 14 and 29. Can we read that quickly as I close? Galatians 3, 14 and 29. Under the new covenant, is it possible for me to, to enjoy? Because some people said, ah, there's nothing with, and I enjoyed Abrahamic blessings too. Galatians 3, 14 and 29. Galatians chapter 3, verse 14 and 29. Quickly, quickly, time is running. That the, hey, in the New Testament again, this thing is here. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ. Once you are in Christ, he said this blessing will come upon you too. I'll say it again. I'll read it. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 29. Verse 29 of the same chapter. If you see, please read it for me. Okay. And if you are what? If you are what? Then you are what? Wow. So under the new covenant, all I need to be is to be Christ, to receive Christ, to belong to Christ. If I am Christ, then I am also Abraham's seed and he is according to the promise. That means me too, I'm already in that cycle. How many of us are born again here? Oh, the day you gave your life to Christ genuinely, you jump out of the cycle of causes, you jump into the cycle of blessings. So another cycle has begun in your life. A cycle of covenant blessing through Christ. You don't understand this thing very well because you just look at me and say, what are they talking about? We're talking about Abrahamic blessings. The Abraham, Abrahamic covenant is still effective under the new covenant. The Abrahamic blessing is on you if you are in Christ. Let me quickly explain what Abrahamic blessing is a little bit in the natural and I close the Jewish race are naturally in the Abrahamic covenant. I'm sure you know that. Huh? The Jewish are the Israelites. They are the most intelligent race in the world. But because you and I are Christ, we're also part of that race. We are not Abrahamic, under Abrahamic covenant because we are Jew. 
naturally we are Nigerians. But by through Christ that we have received, God has inscribed us. Boom. He has inscribed us too inside that covenant. So what the Jewish people enjoy as Abraham's blessing, I'm going to enjoy. You didn't say it very well. These people are the most intelligent in the world. Have you ever seen a country where they throw bomb to and they catch it and they <laughs> go, go on YouTube where you get home. Google it. All that they've been throwing to them, they just scrap it in the air. Missiles. One day I was reading how they caught over almost a thousand missiles under 24 hours. Huh? Iron Dome. <clears throat> they wanted to use that dome to help Ukraine. They had thought about it. Then they changed their mind because they don't want anybody to invent it. Because they know that by the time they get to Ukraine, Russia will do everything. It won't capture anywhere in Ukraine again. Just to capture that thing and go and dismantle it and see what they used to make it. So they decided not to borrow them. They are the only country with that. That's why America, they want to choose the next president. They are talking about Israel. Have you not watched the campaigns? You have to update. Trump is talking about Israel. Kamala is talking about Israel. That are going to be friend of Israel. Because America can be enemy to everybody, they don't want to be enemy to Israel. Enemy to Israel is total loss. Those guys are dangerous guys. One day I was traveling to Johannesburg. I sat beside a young man. He's a medical doctor. We got talking. He said he's a Jewish man. Instantly I connected with him. That is the most talkative trip I've ever done in my life. My wife wasn't there, but I engaged him without talking. In fact, I became so close to him as a friend that it was a car that came to pick me that picked him too. That's how much he now likes me. My, his own car didn't come. My car came for I said, don't no, worry, he will drop you. If you bless, he bless you, you bless yourself. Wait. The service I went for, I... I entered this man so much, he came for my meeting. Very intentional. They are dangerous people. We are dangerous people. We are dangerous people. There's a covenant on our lives. So. Don't mess with us. So. Alice, yes. Hey! Yes. <laughs> you don't know who you are. That's why you are... You think you are the same with everybody. You are not the same with everybody. Jewish people are not the same with everybody. You are not the same with everybody. Let me run this off quickly because by 1840, people were, kill they were killing the Jews everywhere in the world. You know the story, the history. Some few Jewish people ran into America. Very few. Broke. You know when you are running for war, you can't go to school while you are running. You can't do business. So they enter broke into America. The best job they could do was factory jobs. But in a short time, I was a short time. It's when you are under covenant, you only need time. By, eight, by 1983, I told you 1840, they entered. By 1983, less than 100 years, Kadaboko Shotayara. They were just about 15,000. Thomas Sowell of, of Stafford University said, Jewish family income, as at 1983, at the highest of any large ethnic group in the U.S. This is not, I'm not, I'm quoting, you can go, these are facts. 1840 broke. 1983, they checked them. They were the what? The highest their income is the highest among all other ethnic groups in the U.S. 72% above national average. What they call GDP. So when you hear GDP, GDP of Nigeria, don't cry. It's not your GDP they are talking about. Then, how can our GDP rule? You are crying. It's not your GDP. It's the average GDP. But they are 72% higher. And that's where you belong. 72% broke people of yesterday. 
The Jews are just 2% of American population. How many percent? Just 2%. Yet, 48% of American billionaires are Jewish American. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Can you take these statistics? They are just 2%. They, if they are 2% billionaire, they have tried. They are 48% of their billionaires. Half of the billionaires in America are Jewish Americans. Hollywood is the biggest engine, economic engine of America. Abby, they control 80% of Hollywood. 80% of Hollywood. Are you following me? The four largest film studio in Hollywood belongs to Jewish American. One, two, three, four, the four largest belongs to Jewish American. They own the national largest newspaper. The most influential single newspaper, New York Times, belongs to Jewish American. 15% top-ranking civil servants is their own. 50% top 200 intellectuals. If you carry 200 professors together in America, 50%, half of them, they are Jewish American. 20% professors in the, leading, in the leading universities. 37% of American Nobel Prize. 37%. In the 20s, they were just 1% in Germany. In the 20s. Few years later, they control 57% of meta trade. Gold, diamond, 57%. 22% of grain. 39% of textiles. More than 50% in their chamber of commerce. In their stock market floor, there are only 1,474 members. 1,200 are Jewish. How many Jewish people do we have here? Oh, you, are, you are even reluctant. You don't know. You don't even know who you are. What these guys carry us, what we carry there is very strange. Don't mess with us. We're not in Agege to laugh. We're here to take over territories. If you know what you carry, you'll be afraid of yourself. What you are saying so far about you is not even up to 10%. It's just a small percentage. All the Bill, Bill Gates is traced to Jew. He's a Jewish American. Warren Buffett is traced to Jew, Jewish American. Elon Musk, Jewish American. Go to South Africa. The banking in South Africa, more than half belongs to them. They can enter anywhere as broke people, but because they carry Abrahamic blessing, things start moving in their direction. Please don't miss thought service. I'll be preaching on exactly things, practical things they did. Stand up on your feet. Stretch your two hands up. Say today. I provoke Abrahamic blessings over my life. Today, I start living in the consciousness of, a, of Abrahamic covenant and Abrahamic blessing. I am at the cycle. I am in the cycle of covenant blessings of Abraham. Abraham's blessings are mine. I transfer it to my children. My children transfer it to their children. They transfer it to the fourth generation. I am so blessed. No man can curse me. Who God has blessed? Who God has blessed? No man can curse. I am not afraid. Because I am blessed. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed when I go out. I am blessed when I come back home. I am blessed at home. I am blessed at work. I am blessed in school. God's blessing is visible in my life. I carry God's blessings. I walk in the blessing of Abraham. I walk in the blessing. I manifest the blessing of Abraham. I am walking in the blessing of Abraham. 
I am walking in the blessing of Abraham. My children are walking in the blessing of Abraham. And we are walking in covenant blessings. Blessings sealed with oath by God. Blessing God swore to Abraham has become reality in my life. It's in my DNA. It's in my house. The Abraham's blessing is in my house. Everywhere I go, they shall surely be blessed. Everything I touch shall surely be blessed. My body is blessed. The seed of my body is blessed. Things I touch are blessed. Things I come around are blessed. I am blessed. Lift up your two hands and appreciate God. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. The blessing of God is overflowing in my life. In Jesus' precious name we pray. I'm blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. You know what you have just said? You're not just saying you have money. Actually, you have money. But you have things money can buy. You have peace. Like a river. You have joy. Like a river. You have righteousness. Accounted to your account. You are blessed. You are at peace with God. God doesn't have any problem with you. God is not against you. God is not against you. You say, but they said, our father, you are out of that lineage. You are in the lineage of Abraham, where everyone is blessed. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the field. That business of yours is blessed. It will be multi-generational. The blessing of God over the work of your hand is multi-generational. Eyes have not seen nor hear hard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man. The things God sees has in store for those who love him. What God sees has in store for you is immeasurable. You are blessed. No sickness can attack your body. Coronavirus can't catch you. Can I tell you, when they say COVID was killing people, you have, to, you have to be blessing conscious. So you are blessed to. With all respect to coronavirus people, I didn't take the virus. So. And I've traveled several times after then. Yeah, sorry, the vaccine. I didn't take the vaccine. It's the virus. When they say, do we, take, do we not take it? I, I said, let me, see, it's new thing. They said it's new. <clears throat> I cannot be experimenting with my life. Let them use it first. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, we can't say this in public, but let's see how it's going. Then when I saw the American president take second shot, I said, I don't need it. Why are you going for second shot? A few months ago, a few weeks ago, Joe Biden went and took another shot. I said, how many shots? I'm divinely immune against disease. High blood pressure is not my portion. Diabetes can't come near me. Sickness and disease can't move near me. I live in divine health. Long life is my heritage. I will live till I'm satisfied. Because I am blessed. I can't die young. I'll see my children. I'll see my children's children. I'll see my children's children's children. In old age, I'll be walking street. I'll be on my feet in my old age. As my days increase, so shall my strength also be. As my days increase, so shall my strength also be. I will walk in divine health. No disease will come near me. As I do my path, God will do his path. I cannot be broke. Not even at old age. The more my age, the more the blessing, the more the riches. I will live inheritance for my children. I will live inheritance for my children's children. 
I will live in inheritance. My children's children's children. I will live in inheritance to the fourth generation. I am blessed. As you go this morning, manifest the blessing. Walk in the blessing. Enjoy the blessing. Be a blessing. People come across you and say, be a blessing. You'll be light to your world. Those who do business with you, they are blessed. Those who do business with you, they are blessed. Those who support you, they are blessed. Those who blesses you, they are blessed. Anyone that costs you, they are cursed. That's the blessing. Those who cost you, they are cursed. That's the blessing. Those who cost you, they are cursed. That's the blessing. Those who cost you, they are cursed. You are blessed. Wave your hands and give him glory. Give him glory and praise. Thank him and thank him. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Wow, what a great word from heaven. What a word. Now, one thing I know that I'm assured of, and I know is that God will always confirm his words. I declare and I decree. Every word that has been spoken in your direction will find fulfillment in your life. I declare in the name of Jesus for those who might be sick in the body, receive healing in your body. Receive healings in your bone. Receive healing in your, in your blood. Everywhere sickness might be hiding in your body. The Bible says as soon as a stranger hears my voice, they will run out of their hidden place. Every disease and sickness in your body, I command them out in the name of Jesus. I declare Declare God's blessings over your life. If you desire a divine intervention in one area of your life, maybe your marriage, your relationship, your finance, I declare that God will step into your case and turn things around for your good. God bless you. Don't forget, like this video, share it with your friends and family, make comments. I want to read your comments. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'll be back again with another very powerful message. God bless you.